Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. What broke him down? Was it just the body punching? I was hitting him with body punching. I heard him actually crying in there. You're saying that Big was crying when you hit him? Yes. When when did that happen? And clapped the fourth round on. BoxingVoice.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Boxing Voice. This is an immediate reaction show. We got just a few minutes before the main event of Carl Frampton and Leo Santa Cruz for their rematch. But before we get to that, we got to give you our immediate reaction to Mikey Garcia versus Dijon Zlatican. And oh my God, what a beautiful, beautiful performance by Mikey Garcia. Listen, we're going to be talking some boxing as quick as we can before the main event. I want you, my friends, my family, my listeners to keep me posted. I don't want to miss it at all. But we got to open up these phone lines now. I got to tell you something, man. Because the way the system is set up, we can't open up those lines until eight more minutes. But if you got the bat line, which is the Skype number, at Nesta Gibbs on Skype, and let's talk some boxing, man. Oh, Mikey, so poised, so, uh, you know, just so confident in what he was doing there. Definitely controlling the entire pace of the fight with the jab doubling, tripling the jab at times, and just really keeping Zlatan Cannon with his hands up, man. Um, I'm getting all sorts of calls. That's how exciting this fight was. It was crazy, man. I'm telling you. But Mikey, he already said that he wants anybody from 135 to 140. I mean, he said he was ready after one fight, and he definitely proved that. I mean, our resident hipster, Matt, picked him to beat Mikey. And, I mean, this knockout was insane. Zlatan Cannon didn't know where he was at. And what really caused the knockout to look the way that it was was because he turned himself. You know, Mikey hit him, and next thing you know, he didn't know where he was at. Mikey Only, only Mikey knew where he was at, and he landed that, that straight right. Jesus Christ, they're not going to let me live right now. Um. It was a great fight, without a doubt. I'm going to go ahead and take a phone call so I can answer my other phone calls. We're going to go out to my boomerang really quick. Alex, talk to me all the way in Australia. Did you see Mikey Garcia come back with this beautiful performance? Yeah, man, it was actually pretty amazing, I reckon. That that overhand right, man, after he spun, in, spun him around, and that knockout was brutal, man. Uh, I can't believe it. I thought he was, he was almost dead, really. Crazy fight. I just can't wait for the main event now. And we're watching that uh, Santa Cruz Pico Martinez fight. I got my mates with me, casual fans that they don't watch much, but yeah, it's having a little watch now. It's pretty good, guys. Can't wait to hear what you all think. What was it about Mikey that stuck out to you? I mean, right off the bat, he just took control of the ring. He seemed like he was the A side. Yeah, man, he took complete control. Just these straight punches were just dominating the whole fight. Just he's jabbed the whole fight, and then he's just quick combinations. Just completely dominated him. It was awesome. Awesome fight. It sure was, man. I, I, I can't believe just how he was controlling the ring, controlling the pace. Man, he, he, he didn't look like he missed the beat at all. It didn't seem that, you know, he had been out of the ring for as long as he had, um, even though this is his second fight back. Now, my, my question is, what's next for Mikey Garcia? What does he do next? Who does he face? I know that now because he's the, you know, WBC champion, he's going to have that mandatory with um, Jorge Linares because Linares was somehow like emeritus status when he decided to go and face Corolla for the WBA. So now if he could somehow win again in the rematch versus Corolla, he's going to have to face Mikey Garcia and that will definitely be a shootout. Those are two offensive fighters, but I don't see how, you know, Linares can really hold up to the punishment of Garcia. He came out this fight very aggressive, doubling up on the right hand. I mean, you've seen the jab. It was three and 
twos on the jab. He was really keeping keep, keeping Zlatan Cannon busy, keeping his hands up, keeping him with that high guard. I mean, Zlatan Cannon was smooth, and he did try to land that um, what was it, an overhand left a couple of times, but uh, just too small for Mikey. Mikey, a big guy, 146 pounds. He weighed in on fight night. That's almost three divisions that he moved up um overnight. So I don't know who stands a chance with this guy. I can't wait. We got another four minutes before we can open up these phone lines. Tell me in the chat, am I missing anything? Ah, who cares about that Floyd interview? Big whippity doo talking about McGregor. I can hear it from my, um, you know, I, when I had the office door open, I can hear it. Uh, you know, nobody really cares about me, whether we're more excited about Mikey Garcia and what he did and what, you know, possibly could come from this. I mean, you know, Showtime treating him well. Uh, he's really not tied to anyone, so he can go anywhere to, you know, unify or um, do what he likes in terms of his career. Uh, but I'm sure he's going to return that loyalty back to Showtime and, and remain there. Um, Showtime obviously, you know, does business with Eddie Hearn. And, you know, we'll see what happens with that Corolla and, um, you know, Lenares fight. Well, we got about three minutes here. We'll see how 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 rapidly these phone lines light up once they're completely open. But I got some Mikey Garcia quotes here. And I quote, he says, I'm very happy that he's okay. I'm glad he was able to recover from that. The, the natural response is to be celebrating and be cheerful. But then concern does kick in when I saw he was still laying there for a few minutes. I'm glad he's okay. I'm very happy with the performance. We were controlling the pace and the distance right away. From the first round, I saw some openings, and I thought I could hurt him later down the road, but I wasn't expecting it to be so soon in the fight. He's a tough guy. He was able to take some good punches, but when I finally hurt him, I went for that right hand, and I knew it was a good shot. So uh, Mikey definitely in full form. He has a smile on my face. I'm definitely uh, excited that, you know, he decided to call, you know, put on this type of performance because like we mentioned on a Thursday show, there had been some that fe felt like, you know, Mikey was um, a bit boring or he took long to do the job. Well, this time around, I mean, this was quick. He, he, he wasted no time at all. And uh, it was a, a tremendous performance. We got about two minutes on the clock. Remember that number one, four, two, five, five, six, nine, 52, 41. Press one, one time. If you want to speak to the host, Alex, give me another little couple of minutes here. I'm going to go ahead and get Block Talk all situated. How, how are we doing uh, on the feed over there? Did we get into the main event? Is Carl Frampton walking into the ring? It's, it's happening real soon. It's almost happening now. But um, I'd like actually, seeing that performance from Garcia, I'd like him to start wetting his feet in uh, the 140-pound division and work his way towards Crawford. That would be insane. Even though Crawford's a lot bigger, I think, but it'd be a good fight. Good, good fight. But, um... That's for the distant future, so I see in the future, but I hear that starting voice. Well, at least they said, you know, well, at least Mikey said that um, he's willing to fight anyone from 130 to 130, uh, excuse me, 135 to um, 140. So him not being tied to anyone promotionally um, means that if the Crawford fight is on the table, he could possibly, you know, get that. All right, we got about a minute, and I'm hearing already on Alex's feed that, um, you know, Carl Frampton or, or Leo Santa Cruz are walking to the ring. But we got a bunch of, you know, Mexican, uh, what do you call it? What do you call that? Mexican, uh, I don't know, the, the, the songs that they say. Then we got to do the Irish one. Then we got to do an American one. So we got plenty of time before that opening bell rings. Sensa, talk to me, brother. Yeah, what's good, Mass? How you doing, mate? You good, yeah? I'm good, brother. Did you see that knockout by Mikey Garcia or what? It was brutal, man. It was brutal. Oh, it was bad. It was bad, but he looked so sharp, though, didn't he? Crisp, mate. Boxing ability. He looked fantastic, mate. I couldn't agree with you more, man. He was very, very defensively sound. I mean, Zlatan Cannon could yep. barely land a shot. Yeah, he looked completely out of his depth. I mean, it just it looked like a complete mismatch school-wise. Uh, Garcia just looked the absolute, the absolute, you know, complete package. So uh, it's exciting, man. But like I said to you just a minute ago, did um, was that new news? What I said to you? Is that, did did you know what I just said to you on Skype about what Floyd just said? 
Um, what exactly did you write? I thought I just seen the Floyd part and I did hear, um, you know, from the side of my head, like that he was talking that, you know, uh, fight with uh, McGregor and how McGregor decided that he's no longer fighting UFC. He's going to focus his attention on boxing. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so Floyd just said that he's, um, he's pretty sure. Speaking to the, the mic, Connor you're muffled up right now. Yeah, he said uh, that the Connor fight is more than likely going to happen and uh, he can see it happening very soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I caught the interview with Jim Gray kind of in the back. Lincoln Sense, I'm going to get to some other callers, but thanks for calling in. Phone lines are open. We got to do this quickly. I want everybody to keep me posted. We're going to the 609. 609, you're live on TBV. Immediate reaction, Mikey Garcia gets a huge knockout over Zlat the Cannon, brother. Did you catch it? Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, now I want Mikey Garcia and Crawford. What, what, what's your name, first of all? And turn the radio down in the background, buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know the number? one 5241 Immediate reaction. Mikey Garcia knocking out Dijon Zlatan Cannon with some huge shots. 609, we're going back to you. Did you turn the radio off? What was your immediate reaction? Talk to me. My name is ZJ. ZJ, what's going on, brother? What's going on, my brother? I'm watching you right now, man. I like that KO, man. I love it. What's up? What, what do you think about Mikey and Crawford, man? Mikey needs to move up. I would definitely love Mikey and Crawford. He did say that he's open to any fights from 135 to 140. So uh, I'm definitely interested in that. I got some more quotes coming in fresh off the, you know, fresh off the fight. Um, I want to thank God for this opportunity, and I am thankful to, just, to Dijon, my opponent, that he is okay now. We never wish any bad on anyone in the sport, and I'm glad that he was able to get up and be okay. I wish him a great career still, and he said thank you. I told him he's a champion, and once again, always a champion. I think it was a great performance. I fought a smart fight, and I kept the distance, controlled the range. We had a great game plan. I stuck... I stuck to my jab and my left hand was going to be key and I needed to follow through with my right hand. I was able to connect and hurt him. I was always in shape and I was always active. I think the layoff allowed me to reignite my fire and passion and bring back the love for the sport. And in that two and in two and a half years off, I always had the support of my loyal fans. I really appreciate the love and support of all the fans. So, uh, Mikey, definitely feeling the love. Let's go out to 559. You're live on TBV. Immediate reaction. Mikey Garcia, talk to me. Mikey motherfucking Garcia, Ness. Man, that guy is back. This is Alex Lemon, man. That, there's nobody at 135 that could beat Mikey Garcia. I mean, uh, they're talking about him moving up already. That's crazy, though. Let him clean out that division first. But there is no competition until he gets to 140. And facing somebody like Crawford. Great fight, man. I'm ex fucking ecstatic. I'm ready to watch this uh, cruise in Frampton that's uh, about to start. Did they get past all the uh, ring announcements and uh, what, what do you call those? The, um, uh, what is it? Yeah. Not no, the they're guy. still Star introducing stuff, man. Shit like that. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they're still saying all the judges and stuff right now. Oh, well, we got time. Man, yeah, Mikey so looks good. so sharp, man. I'm just watching this guy, and I'm like, wow, he is so sharp. The way hey, he was man, able he to keep his range. Look fucking weak. Yeah. I mean, I, I wonder how Matt's feeling right about now. Let me get to some other callers, though, Alex. We're going to 202. Looks like DC. Talk to me. Hey, Ness, you already know what it is, man. Look, I I'm just going to give Matt a moment of silence. My phone ain't go out. Okay, you know, shout out. <laughs> Listen, we already talked about this. Mikey is elite. People have forgot about that. He was at 126. He went up to 30. He came back for it right here at 40, and he came back to 35. You talking about a dude with just one hand, not going to do nothing to Mikey. Elite fighters take your best weapon away from you and destroy you. He destroyed him. I give him a couple more fights, and then maybe we got a super fight with him and Terrence Crawford. But I told him before, and MD said he was too small. I was like, uh-uh. Mikey Garcia is prime for Crawford. I need, think he need a couple more fights for the ring rust. And even that ring rust, people might look at this fight and say, what ring rust? 
the, the ring rest when Mikey was on top of his game, he was super shot, man. He looked great. He looked great, like I thought he was. So that's my call, brother. What you think about him, uh, Ness? Oh, did man. Did he look, in, look in impressed like you thought he would, or did you think he would have more problems? No, 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 no. He was uh, – well, I didn't know what to expect. I never seen Zlatan Cannon. And uh, Mikey was just on form. It was impressive from the opening bell, everything. I, I really liked the way that he controlled the range and distance and kept Zlatan Cannon at bay uh, and away from danger. Yeah, well. 951, you're up. Who's this, compa? What up, man? This is me, compa, right? Getting ready to watch the Santa Cruz France fight. What up, what up? What up? Nothing much. Hey, man, media reaction. Uh, nobody should be surprised. You know, Mikey Garcia is the truth. And he beats everybody at 135. That's my call, boxing boy. All right, brother. Well, thanks for calling in, compa. That's one of our boomerangs on Patreon. If you like what we do, definitely support us on Patreon. We got more exclusive over there. We're going to be back with another immediate reaction show as long as that, um, you know, main event turns out to be as good as it was the first time around this has been the boxing boys bringing you an immediate reaction just to get your thoughts really quick now we're going back to the fights ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed it remember we'll be back in a couple hours later <laughs>